And the next morning, we awoke again inside of Funkau at the same point which we had left in the night. One might almost have believed that all the events of the past night had been but a dream. At the commencement of the storm, the Admiral had expressed a wish that none of us should be on deck. But he perceived my curiosity, and I was allowed to remain the whole time on the quarter deck with Captain Ross. I only quitted it to go and apprise the Emperor of the state of things. From the moment that the Emperor set foot on the Northumberland, he formed for himself entirely new habits. He constantly opposed the most noble resignation to the effects of Lord Bathurst's instructions, and perhaps by this means doubly obtained the respect and admiration of all the English who had the honor to approach him. Not one of them could resist the magical influence of his actions and words, and every day we remarked the admiral advancing a step nearer to the conduct which he would doubtless have assumed from the first if his instructions had prescribed to him respect for crowned heads instead of the severity of a gendarme who is answerable for his prisoner the emperor breakfasted in his room and did not appear among the English till about four o'clock when he passed into the saloon and amused himself with a game of chess or piquet till the admiral came to pay his respects to him and to take him to dinner. An English dinner would have been too long for his habits. From the first, he rose at the time when ladies in England quit the table and went to walk on the deck. The admiral hesitated a moment. We all rose, and the English followed our example. The emperor begged them to receive themselves and took the grand marshal alone with him. From that day forward, he continued this habit during the whole voyage. We each took our turn to follow him to the deck. The emperor almost always conversed during his walk on the deck with the officers and often with the crew of the vessel. He questioned them about the actions in which they had been and about the organization of the navy and always astonished them by his own knowledge he chose for an interpreter some young midshipman who spoke french or mr o'meara or sometimes even a sailor or a soldier for several of these were from jersey and spoke french perfectly well there were also several italians from the ionian isles or from alta whom he liked to call and employs interpreters. This is something.